Welcome back to Natty Muscle Radio, where it's our mission to make natural bodybuilding great again. I have a highly esteemed panel of guests this week to wrap up the numerous natural bodybuilding championships that occurred uh, across the United States uh, that included competitors from all around the world. Um, so I'm gonna, we're gonna waste no time. I'm just gonna introduce my guests real quick. We have Brandon Wadas, friend of the podcast. Jose Francisco Espinoza, Mr. Universe 2018, also friend of the podcast. And of course, last but not least, Albert Shao of Shao Time Fitness, who was at WMBF Worlds and will be, you know, pretty um, useful for providing some context about everything that went on there. Um, full disclosure, I didn't see any of the shows live. I watched from my computer. We had a nice group chat going. We made some notes, uh, you know. I think it's pretty amazing that we can at least follow natural bodybuilding on social media close enough. Um, you know, WMBF had a webcast. I you know the PNBA had one as well. I didn't get to view that. But, um, you know, we're going to waste no time and go right into it. Start with the IPE championships. Uh, in that class for the top three bodybuilding, we had Mark Meadows, number one, uh, the infamous Moji Alua in second, and Carl Sievert, who we did an interview with earlier this year as their top three. And I'm going to go ahead and talk to Brandon and say what he thought of this top three. Yeah, so I think it was uh, a great show overall as far as the top three goes. Unfortunately, there was only five bodybuilders uh, in that class, which was a little bit disappointing considering last year when I did that, I think there was 10 of us, I want to say, something like that. So, you know, for it to be cut in half, uh, was a bit disappointing, but I think that's just because everything was on the same weekend. Uh, so that's kind of the running theme. You know, this past weekend, there was just so many bodybuilding competitions, world championships, you know, if you will, all on the same weekend that the the competition was spread a little bit thin. But with that being said, um, I do think that those top three guys definitely stood out. Um, I didn't necessarily have it in the order that it fell. Uh, I kind of saw... Carl Sievert not winning and that hurts to say honestly because Carl's a, a good friend of mine we've competed against each other before he's got a, a ton of muscle obviously he's super peeled uh, but he just doesn't place well at larger shows because of his shape and I saw that he did get feedback from the judges that said his front poses killed him again with his blocky waist uh, and that's just it's a shame because he's just such a darn good bodybuilder but from an aesthetic standpoint, he definitely gets marked down. If anything, I would have had Carl second. Um, personally, I thought Moji was going to win. Uh, Moji has incredible uh, shape as well as muscle bellies. Um, Moji does have the characteristic of walking around extremely lean all year. But he fails, at least in most recent years that I've seen, to really bring that nasty nasty conditioning in his uh, glutes and hams he's had it before his quads are always peeled his quads are super developed which makes them look really real really peeled um but unfortunately moji i think just didn't come in as as good as he could have but yeah mark meadow surprised me uh, mark actually won an ocb pro show in arizona this year uh, a couple of my, one of my guys faced him and he looked good then uh, i would say this that mark was smaller uh, than he has been in years past. Mark tends to be a little bit more muscular. I think this year they went for the little bit leaner look, which, hey, obviously he won, uh, you know, the world championships in the IPE. He looked great. Um, I just didn't have him taking the overall. Um, and once once again, you know, I will say I just saw, like, the live feeds and the pictures and whatnot, so I wasn't there in person. Uh, but I would have had, personally, Moji, Carl, and then Mark. That's how I saw it. Uh, I know when I was watching the feeds, uh, when they announced Carl in third, uh, there was a lot of gasps and people thought for sure he was going to win just because of his size. And I think he definitely like was the crowd favorite, but unfortunately the crowd favorite, you know, is not necessarily always going to win first place. I, I just had reviewed the pictures uh, right before I came on here. And the way I saw it was that, um, you know, this Meadows guy has some of the craziest biceps I've ever seen in a natural competitor, mm -hmm. just in the way they peak. So I guess that probably stood out on stage. Um, and like I said, I wasn't there for the judging. So it's really hard for me to make an impression of kind of like when they're moving them around. Because, you know, when you see them live moving through space in person, you get an impression right. of kind of what the judges want. So I didn't get that. But 
the way I see it is kind of I'm kind of agreeing with you, Brandon. Like I think because you know obviously Seaver has the most muscularity and he has like just Crazy. like just like the by far the most peeled and just the widest frame. So your eyes kind of go to him. So if they have him in third because he's not balanced, I don't right. think this Meadows guy was really that balanced <laughs> either compared to Moji. Right. So if you're going for like balance and overall, you got I think you should go with Moji. You know what right. I mean? If you're going with muscularity and just crazy conditioning, it's Sievert all day. Yeah. And I will say, like, I've been following Carl for a while, and he was like a former teammate when we were both being coached by Ryan Alstrom. Mm -hmm. And the way he showed up this year, it really impressed me uh, with like the fullness and the conditioning. I've never seen his just arms and look that crazy. And like, yeah. uh, there's a shot of him hitting a readable bicep. His arms just Do look you guys know massive. what the weight is, by the way? Low 200s. Yeah. 200s. He's but, pretty tall, so he's like six, six, six one, one right? six mm -hmm. one, yeah. Um, but the thing is with this, with this added upper body fullness that him and his coach achieved this year, which, like I said, it was mind blowing to me. It blew my mind. But his legs, I'd say, look about the same. Mm -hmm. So what that does for his balance is it makes him look even more top heavy right. when that was kind of his struggle before. So I will say, like, props to Carl for probably coming in like the best he could. Oh yeah, yeah. but. The balance, you know, is obviously what's hurting him here. So I think that's what the judges saw. And just someone who's looked at Carl's physique a lot, that's kind of what stood out to me. And once again, very impressed with all the top three. Um, but yeah, I would have had Moji first if you're going for balance and overall aesthetics and probably like, you know, presentation or whatever. Um, I know I know Carl's presentation is great too. And I, I don't, I've never seen this Mark Meadows guy before, so... First time seeing him, craziest biceps I've seen in a while. Um, does anyone want to jump in and say anything else about that lineup, or we can move on? Uh, well, I agreed with uh, some of the things you said. Uh, number one, I had a question in regards to the posing routine in the IP, because I've competed in the IP in the past, or the NFF, which is part of the IP, but is the posing routine part of your score? No. Because Moji... <laughs> a very very good poser mm -hmm. and he has an amazing posing routine and he's yeah. always been a bit good poser so i was surprised with after his posing routine you know that he didn't take first you know because mm -hmm. he's you know like you said he wasn't as peeled as he used to be he's a lot older right uh i honestly think he's probably lost a little bit of muscle just through the fact you know as you get older you lose muscle mm -hmm. you know especially at that age where he's at right so I honestly thought with that routine that might take him over the top, mm -hmm. but like you said, they don't, they don't, uh, yeah, it just doesn't apply. Not, and I, I remember apply. back in 2015, I did, I did a show in uh, Minnesota with Carl and the posing routine was actually optional. So only like three guys, it was optional. Yeah. Only like three guys out of like 12 or 15 of us actually did a posing routine. I didn't even do a posing routine. Uh, Carl, of course, did, and a couple other guys did, but that was it. There was only like three out of 15. It was nuts. Wow. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Shao, and anything to add to the uh, to the IPE discussion? Did you, did you uh, were you able to take this in, or, you know, you're too busy at WMF Worlds that day? Um, honestly, I was too busy at the Worlds, but um, just looking at the pictures, like, it was pretty stacked. I'm really impressed with all the um, competitors on stage. Like, you know, there's always times where there's a lot of competitors, but not everybody's really world quality competitors. Mm -hmm. But uh, looking at this class, it's just they brought it, and and I see from the pictures. I, like I said, I didn't watch it live, and I wasn't there. Sometimes pictures, you know, as Jose always mentioned, 4K. No, nah, not with the 4K, <laughs> but uh, pictures only tells one side of the story. But um, if we're talking about bodybuilding, we talk about the judging, the the pre judging, where transition really helped. Right. also plays a role you know so sometimes you might see a great shot but it just so happens the photographer took that great shot so i don't i wasn't there to really see right how the transition went and everything so I'm i pretty did, sure that i actually did want to mention one last thing uh just because i do think it's relevant per the size as well in the ipe that you actually have to qualify for this one so you have to place in the top half of your class throughout the cor the course of the year in order to even qualify for worlds um, they've changed their stipulations over the years, but that's what it was this year. So I think that's why IPE tends to be a little bit smaller as opposed to like WNBF Worlds, where you know you anyone could pretty much do it. At least that's my understanding. I don't really follow the WNBF too closely, 
So maybe I'm wrong. But I think you uh, need to do a pro show, but I don't know if the placing okay. matters. So just have yeah. to do a pro a show. Pro but in, show. The IP, in the IPE, you have to place in the top half of your class. So it makes it a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Right. I, will I say think they too, should honestly do that for the WMBF as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that too. But obviously, the WMBF yeah. probably just had too many pros at Worlds, you know, which yeah. I think it's cool they had so many. But, anyways, we'll get to that. I will say for the IPE Worlds, the lighting seemed really good. Like from the pictures I saw, like anyone who's curious about the pictures, if you're friends with Carl on Facebook, he posted some good photos there of, uh, and you can kind of see what's going on there. And like the, you can really see the detail and the separation in everyone. And it looks like it was very, you know, brightly lit up and just looked like it, w- it would have been fun to watch in person just with the lighting being that good. Uh, and like we'll get to later, the lighting sometimes can be a pretty big issue with some of these shows. But with that being said, we'll move on to the PNBA champions ch- championships that happened uh, this weekend. Um, I'm not wasn't overly familiar with the PNBA. I always kind of knew about them. I knew a few competitors. Obviously, I know Ricardo, uh, who would have would have won that show. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get Jose to give me his rundown of the top three there. All right. So the top three were um, Philip Ricardo, and if you're in natural bodybuilding, you know that Philip Ricardo is like a legend in the sport. He has not only competed in the PNBA, but he's competed in the WNBF, the IFPA. I believe the it was the WNBF, but I'm not sure. But I know he competed in the IFPA, and he's competed in the OCB because he was one of the – I think he's the only guy that's ever beat Doug Miller, right? Yeah, he, he beat, beat him at the – he beat Doug at the Orton. I yep. didn't even know that. Wow. Confirmed. Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. But back in the day – so I think Philip Ricardo's 50 now, if I'm not wrong. Got but uh, he, yeah. and, he, and he came out of retirement as well mm-hmm. uh, to compete in this uh, championship. And I believe he came out to compete in this championship because they are filming a new generation iron movie. Right. And they are uh, focusing <laughs> it on the PNBA. So, you know, everyone is really like looking at natural bodybuilding for the first time you know, in the worldwide aspect of the sport or whatever you could say. But um, I wouldn't call the PNBA one of the most legit natural bodybuilding organizations because after talking to Siobhan just this past weekend, I even asked him himself. I was like, did you even get drug tested for the show? He goes, nope. Yep. Did you see anyone get drug tested for the show? He goes, I didn't see anyone get drug tested yep. for the show. So I was like, God damn. See, so, I, I don't want to cast... And it's funny how some organizations say, oh, we're the most, you know, tested drug organization in the world. I was like, you didn't even yeah. test your top three athletes. All right, and just, to, just for all the listeners, too, like, let's be, let's be clear that Siobhan placed third, and he didn't even get drug tested. He won money and didn't get drug tested. That See, is nuts. I had always kind of heard rumblings, and like I said, I, I never want to... Like I have a pretty positive attitude about natural bodybuilding. I hate I hate the new generation, the YouTube people who thinks everyone's a fake natty. But I always had kind of. I know Siobhan's natural. I know he's one hundred percent natural. You know, right. he's comp- oh, he's yeah. a world champion. He's competed in WMBF. He's competed in every the D Pack, which is one of every federation. He's Clean either house, one or, or yeah, one oh, or yeah. the top three at a world championship in every org. Right. What, I, what I'm trying to say, though, is I'd always heard kind of some rumblings about the PNBA not having the best testing practices and there being some people of suspicion competing in there in the past. And so I, I, I just – and since... Well, I'll tell you something about the, the WMBF. And I'm sorry about talking about different organizations. The yeah. WMBF says they're the most tested organization. Yes, I've been polygraph tested by all of them. I have been drug tested by – you know, all the wins or, you know, the top placings that I've received. But the thing is, only two shows, I've actually got my drug test panel back. Mm-hmm. Sometimes right. I just get an email saying, oh, by the way, you're good. You're good. That's so, what I got. That's what I got. I'll be honest. They, I didn't get anything yeah. from a lab. I just got no bad substances. Whole panel from the lab saying everything they tested for. And, you know, every, you know, I mm-hmm. passed everything. But I wish every organization would actually do that and give you the panel, you know, oh, but a lot of people are like, oh, then they're going to know exactly what they're testing for. So you could be taking something else that you're not testing, you know? Right. So so that that was a really cool aside. And like I said, for anyone who doesn't really know the PNBA, like myself, that was, you know, and how they compare to other federations, that's cool. But what was your rundown of how the physiques compared to each other top three, Jose? 
Okay, so the poster boy, right, for the, for the past few years, I would say, would be uh, Rob Terry. And Rob Terry is a very tall, he's like 6'4". He's a big-ass dude. Um, and he's like an ex-wrestler. Yeah. yeah. So I think he like competed like in the WWE. He did, he? yeah. Like, so he's like, a, you know, he's like a, a big wrestler guy. And in my in my personal opinion, I'm not a big fan of his physique whatsoever. He has he's just a big guy, and a lot of people are like, ooh, you know, he's like Goliath. He's a monster, <laughs> but he's got chicken legs. His, he's got a wide waist. You know, he just doesn't look good like as a bodybuilder. You know, he's a muscular dude, but he just does not have an aesthetic body mm. for someone that follows bodybuilding or understands the sport. So when I see him, I'm like, eh, you don't look that good. You know, right. but the PNBA loves him. You know, he's like the poster boy of this upcoming movie. Everyone's like all about this guy. And then he showed up on stage at the Natural Olympia. And honestly, he looked back. He was flat. He wasn't fully conditioned. He can't pose for, for shit. And he just didn't look good. So Siobhan showed up, who is one of the top bodybuilders of this last decade. I would say he's one of the top five guys in the last 10 years in bodybuilding. You know, one of the most you know, <coughs> legit guys in the sport. And also Philip Ricardo, who at one point in time was one of the top guys in the sport. Right. Coming out of retirement, coming almost at 50 years, you know, 50 years old, coming back out of retirement. Now, Philip Ricardo has at one point in time had some of the best conditioning in the sport. His glutes mm -hmm. and hamstrings were ridiculous. But now he has a different look to him. Like he has an older look. His, yeah. I honestly think he's atrophied a little bit. You know, everyone's like, oh, he's still veiny. I'm like, ah, those could be varicose veins. Those could be yeah, real veins. I feel like, like they are like, like his veins. Full, like definitely density-wise. You know, like it, it looks different, look like, you know? Yeah. He doesn't look, he doesn't have that same look. Yeah, he always has had that hard look to him, mm -hmm. but it's different. And so I wasn't a big yeah. fan of his muscle this you know this go around so honestly when i saw siobhan compared to him i thought siobhan had siobhan looked better siobhan had the best conditioning compared to all three of them well compared well i would say they were equally conditioned but siobhan looked fuller right more dense muscle he just yeah looked, i would say denser way he popped more because i saw the he, the clip you showed me and he, he looked, just when they showed the comparison he just looked now you can siobhan, see like the age definitely monster huge monsters that looked like they weren't natural but they didn't bring the conditioning that siobhan always brings to the stage so i was a little disappointed i honestly thought siobhan should have taken first philip ricardo should have taken second and rob terry shouldn't even place in top three he should have taken like a fourth or maybe mm -hmm. fifth maybe in the sixth place because there were some guys that were a lot that looked a lot better than him you know in, in my in my opinion but that's I'm a sport i'm picks right now and i do agree like this this front double that uh, rob terry's hitting he's just not even hitting it right his arms are too high his he's just not it's not it's not it man it's not it uh yeah I'd, I'd say that's looks to me like a pretty good rundown of things and i didn't really like i said i wasn't able to really take in the live stream very well but yeah i would definitely at, at you know definitely at least agree that this rob terry guy was you know probably somewhat gifted to a position here just it looks like I don't know. There looks like and some I other guys up here that should have been ahead of him for sure. Top two because he's making that movie. Right, and if yeah. he wasn't making that movie, I don't think he would have been there. But the thing is, I hope that they put the competition on the movie so that people can actually see right. the difference between all of them. Because Siobhan really, in my opinion, should have won. But, you know, I'm, I'm honestly going to want to see it because it's probably going to be like 6K now. So it's going to be super <laughs> clear. So we can actually see, you know, 100% what it looks like. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see. I did talk to uh, Philip. I, just, I did shoot him a congratulatory message. And he did say that the movie is going to come out. He said they're, they're pretty confident it's going to come out. So I, I am definitely interested to see it. I think overall for natural bodybuilding, it'll be great. Uh, you know, it kind of stinks that it was uh, for the PNBA. But, hey, you know, we got we to gotta take that, you know, as, as it is. Uh, it can't, it can't necessarily, necessarily be in the there. WNBF or the IPE or the OCB. Like, you know, they're they're a big production. That's a organization when it comes to natural or quote unquote natural bodybuilding. They have right. a lot of money. Right. They have the, you right. know, they have the Iron Man magazine. Yeah, they right. have 
you know, they have more resources than other people. Right. So it's cool that it's going to come out and I think it'll help us overall, you know, but uh, as far as I do want to say a couple things that Jose, uh, I just want to kind of jump off of what he was saying. I definitely agree uh, that Rob Terry probably shouldn't have got second. Um, I think Siobhan definitely looked better than he did at the Yorton. I don't know whether he lost a little bit more weight, filled out a little bit more, but I thought he looked really, really good. Um, personally, Yorton. Personally, Yorton. Yeah, personally, the way that they did the callouts with the PNBA, <laughs> I honestly thought that Siobhan was going to win because it was super weird. If anybody watched how they did the lineup, it was like they brought all the guys out, you know, they broke them up into groups and then they brought like the top six or seven out or whatever. And then they had like uh, Siobhan step forward and Rob Terry step forward. And then they hit a couple poses. And then they brought Philip out with all of them. And then they hit a couple more poses. And then like. Uh, I actually but, like that. I wish they Yeah, it was cool. But it was really. They, cool. Based off of how they were doing it, like Philip wasn't out there all that all that long. And it seemed like like Siobhan and Rob were out there the most. So I was like, okay, maybe they're one, two. But maybe in their opinion, this is how I saw it, like after the outcome, maybe they just thought like Philip was so good that they just kind of left him back there like, okay, well, he's our number one and we're, these these guys are going to fight for second and third. Uh, that's the way that I saw it after obviously the outcome, like 2020 hindsight. Yeah, 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 it's interesting. Yeah, I like the idea. That, I like how they did call it. It's like, especially too, we'll get into how they do the WMBF, but like, if there were some top natural physiques and they, we, you know, they kind of determined there was a top three, I want to see them go shot for shot, and I want to nerd out. I want to nerd out who was the best front double, uh, who's got the best, you know, quarter turn to the right. You know what I mean? Uh, right. You know, I uh, fans want to see that. You know, legit fans of the sport, right? So I would say props to that federation for you know making it probably pretty entertaining for the crowd and right. you know um, doing it the way bodybuilding fans would like to, like it to be done. So but, that's good stuff. From what I saw. The PNBA had the biggest athletes on stage, man. Those guys were all big, huge. Those yeah. guys were way bigger than the IP guys, and way bigger oh, yeah. than way way bigger than WNBA. Right, and the, one of the guys, and oh man, I started following him on Instagram. Uh, I I don't know. I that don't German remember. dude. The German I don't guy? remember. Is it the the guy that's the strong man? Oh no, no. I saw some guy from Germany, and he's oh, like dude. five nine, one ninety. I'm like, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Um. Dude, I don't, I don't know, but who? I'm. Uh, this is not going to be good for. This is my half story, but dude, this guy, uh, he's a, like trains as a strong man, and he's as tall, if not taller, than Rob Terry, and it was a giant. He just wasn't conditioned as much. If you watch the video of the PNBA, you, he definitely stands out, and I agree. There, they had the biggest dudes. Whether that has to do with the lack thereof drug testing, I don't know, but dude, the, they were definitely, definitely massive. What's that? Do you know the guy's name, Brandon? Are you trying no, to? No, I'm drawing a blank on it. Right? I'm, okay. I'm disappointed in myself. That's okay. Some of these names are hard to hard to keep track of, especially um, when they're foreign too, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> anyways, we'll go ahead and move on to the WMBF Worlds. So, obviously, huge event. Uh, like they like the WF was advertising it, 340 competitors. I I don't know if that included pros and amateurs or just pros, but. Anyone who was there knows it was a long ass day. I know the amateur show didn't end till three forty in the morning. So um, props to any coach who's able to stick it out there for the whole day uh, with their clients. Props to anyone who was able to you know get up on stage that late. You know that's pretty crazy. But we'll go ahead and just start with uh, the pro bantamweight class. So uh, I actually got to watch a fair bit of this part here and you know they brought everyone out the bantamweight class wasn't huge but it, to me it looked like a pretty easy win for brett freeman um brett in my eyes brought you know amazing condition you know he was competing all year i know it was kind of his plan to peak for this event in terms of just like really sucking down to that you know um you know really low levels of body fat just as low as he could get and uh i think it paid off here i think obviously it helps you know the eyes were on him that he was you know a previous world champion in that class but um, Shao, what do you think? Was it pretty? Was it pretty cut and dry when they had that class out there that Brett had it? Um, actually, I'm, I'm first. I was really glad I made it just in time because in the beginning, <laughs> I re I didn't really think they're gonna start on time. But it started when early. I got, yeah, it started eight thirty on the dot, like they mentioned. So when I got there, um, the bantamweight class came out. Um, when I saw them, 
it, it was a lot of people. It definitely was. Um, there were, I think there were about like seven or eight competitors. Um, I did. Brett stood out. Um, who else? I was looking. I was really there, really looking for my um, supporting my boy Teddy and Brett. And and yeah. what happened was, I did see one thing. I have to say at the WMBF World is that these international guys they come in, they come in ready, man. Some of these guys like they come in conditioned. There's the huge man. I was gonna, I was impressed by the uh, bat and weight class this year. Uh, the only guy I was honestly impressed by was uh, Brett. Mm-hmm. Uh, Teddy there was a guy there. Yeah, there was a had just been injured. Yeah, Teddy's a friend of mine, and yeah. Teddy had torn his abductor yeah. about maybe the eight, of prep. not yeah. at the beginning of prep. Yeah, yeah. So he really oh, wow. he couldn't squat the he could not squat the entire yeah. the entire prep. So it showed his physique. Yeah. He had very very small legs um, mm-hmm. compared to like you know to to the past his past uh, competition season. So right. he was really upset and hurt about that. Mm-hmm. But you know I'm truly truly impressed that he continued his prep. You know, and I give him 100 percent respect yes. for mm-hmm. pushing through injured. You know, because yeah. that was that would be difficult to yeah. not to really put 100 percent on your lower body getting ready for you know world championship. So much respect to that. Yeah. But besides that, I was not impressed with the weight classes I was the prior year. The prior year in 2018, when I competed, there mm-hmm. was four guys. And there was, you know, it was a stiffer class. And I was oh, talking yeah. to other guys that competed, like Jerry. I was talking to uh, Francisco and Zunza. And we were all like, yeah, this last year, the 2018 was way, way tougher than this past year. Mm-hmm. But Brett looked amazing. I honestly think Brett <laughs> had the best conditioning out of Anyone in every class, besides that, brought, besides the amateur Brandon Kempner, right. that other yes. guy from Australia. Yes. I think those were the two most conditioned guys yes. in the entire world championship. Now, yes. do you guys know off of hand <clears throat> what the and Jose, you you might know the answer to this. What the Bantam like weight cutoff is? It's one fifty, one fifty yeah. and under. And, and do last, you know- when I competed, I had to freaking, I had to cut water. Yeah. I had to go in a sauna. I yeah. had to do all sorts of shit to manipulate water just to get down there. Now, do I'm either do either of you guys know like what Brett actually weighs when he like weighs in? Is he well under one uh, fifty? Yeah, he got down to one forty three. Yeah. Okay, he mentioned, yeah. so, so I did talk to him at the parking lot. I did bump okay. into him and oh. congratulate him. <laughs> and uh, it, it's funny because it was so long. He was like, "I'm actually gonna go, um, just go take a nap." And and this was like when I went out for lunch, and it was long. But he mentioned that originally they weren't even gonna split the classes up. And they were gonna just put them all with the lightweight, and I was like, what? "Exactly." I heard the same exact. Yeah, thing. and I think they I was so glad they split it because it wouldn't have been fair. Like you know, like right. Because like many bodies on stage. Guys, exactly, but, and but the and other this, thing that really, really pisses me off, and I'm gonna be honest with you, because they did the same bullshit last year. They don't tell you till the very end. You know that yeah. day of the show, they're like, "Oh, by the way, there's a cutoff weight." So I'm like, "Fuck!" I right. went 153, 154. Should I cut down under? Yeah. And you know. And be under 150, yeah. so I'll be the biggest guy in the class. Right. Or should I just stay where I'm at while I'm peaking? Right. You yeah. know, because you're throwing in carbs, you're throwing in water, you're filling up, yeah. and you're getting heavier at the same time. So that's, I honestly think that is complete bullshit. They should let you know from the get go. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna have four classes at the World Championship. We're not gonna tell you 12 hours before the day of the show that we're gonna split the shit so that you need to cut drastically and do some yeah. sort of, yeah. you know, water cut to make weight. Because in bodybuilding, it's not fighting. You're not just going to sit there and cut weight and make right. your yes. body will look completely, completely yeah, different. Yeah. You make those changes to your body, you know? So I'll be honest, Bob, Tina, whoever's listening, do not do that shit the following year. That's detrimental for the athlete. The guys who have busted their asses off all year yeah. long to get the world championship to say, oh, by the way, we're going to split classes up. If you guys know that you have 40 guys competing between lightweight and split it up, split it up easy. Yeah. No? Yeah. And, you know, this is the world championships. This, is, this isn't this is like an amateur pro qualifier, you know, like like it, it was the same at, at my show for an, uh, like like the natural mania or whatever. But, I mean, I, I think that's to be expected for an amateur event. Like you, there's people signing up the day before. Worlds a little should be a bit of a different monster. They should have that shit on lock like weeks before, you know, or at least like. A week or two out, you know, so yeah. the athlete can, you know, strategize a little bit, right? See, so. now I can see why they wouldn't give us like the list of the classes beforehand because obviously you got to weigh in. 
but they know how many total people are going <laughs> to sign up. So, yeah. for example, like when I did the Yorton uh, last year, there was 27 guys, and they knew, okay, there's going to be three classes, and it's just going to be, you know, uh, you know, nine guys in a class or whatever. I guess my math is off. Maybe there was 21 of us because nine times three is 21, but not 29. But anyway, <laughs> uh, they knew that it was going to be, you know, nine guys in every class. That's it. And they just divided it by height, and it was easy. For Worlds, they should have clear cutoffs for the weight. Yes. And they say going into it, okay, these are the weight cutoffs. Because in like Jose saying, he's literally right on the cusp. He might want to try to do something so he could come in the biggest. But if you literally tell someone the day before, like as an athlete, as a coach, you can't prepare for that. And that's – and talking about stress, I mean, I know Jose has gone through a lot of stress with his preps before. And like I remember like – him saying like his dog died like the day before a show and everything like come on man like this guy already has enough stress in his life and to throw that on top of everything like it's yeah. just it's crazy that was bad man yeah it was hard i honestly think anyone who's in like super crazy tight conditioning like like well, like what you want to be for a natural body the world championship like you're already kind of mentally kind of screwed up like i was 100 right, right. i was i was yeah. all over the place mentally those last last week or two especially just even all the travel to get to the show is crazy the lack of sleep you know like it's just yeah so they're adding more stress on top of that for for me it wasn't just like me being mentally fucked my wife was crying for like 48 hours and i'm sitting there on the airplane on no sleep and my wife's just crying the whole time she gets to the hotel she's crying you know because our dog's part of the family i'm sitting there like fuck you know i haven't slept in 36 hours oh by the way tomorrow i'm competing at a world championship my yeah. cortisol levels up the roof yeah. i'm holding tons of water yeah. you know and it's like literally holding water it's not like the shit you hear in the ifbb like the guy's fat and you're telling him he's holding right. water no right. i was lean as fuck shredded yeah. but i was just holding tons of stress you know just because of i was so stressed and i hadn't slept so yeah. yes those things do make do make your body look completely different you know night and day Agreed, agreed. So let's move on to uh, the lightweight class. And so I think this was one of the biggest surprises of the show for the for the call. And, uh, you know, obviously everyone knows I'm a pretty big, or anyone who listens to the show knows that I'm a pretty big Levi Burge fanboy. And I was watching the shots, and I'll be honest, I had Levi winning from what I saw. Um, I noticed too. I had Levi they, winning, though, overall. The whole thing? Honest, I thought, yeah. I thought, I thought he was doing the whole damn thing. Yep. Me too, me too. Um, and, you know, I... I think it must have been a hard call for the judges, and we'll get we'll get shadowed away on this. But you know, they there was a video the WMF posted, and they flashed across the stage, and Levi was freaking peeled. Like there was like yeah. it's just a glimpse, but he hits a side chest and shot. This is he, not just like a fork. This isn't like a high quality yeah. camera. This is right. some guy's shitty phone. And I was like, when they hit that side pose, I was like, no way, man, because yeah. Levi had glutes, hamstrings, yeah. and he had able hamstrings from the back. Yeah, and now that is his side you chest know? is his best pose for sure. Because I had, was fortunate enough to see him at the Yorton, and when he hit his side pose, his side chest, all everybody, and I was sitting next to Doug even, and we were like, "Holy shit, who is this guy, and where did he come from?" And then we realized who it was. You know, after we looked at the lineup, we're like, "Oh, that's Levi. No shit, like this guy's a monster." I, the I only think too- thing about Levi is his posing. Right. At the Yorton, his posing was off. It was off. I honestly, yeah. it was bad. Yeah. Like some of his, you know, when he's hitting those just a side relaxed, I was like, yeah. Yeah. you know, and he was hitting some of these poses. I'm like, no, nah, man, you really need to work on that. He did improve his posing because yeah. at WMBF Worlds, he looked a lot better. Pro- a bunch of people probably told him, hey, you need to work on your posing because yeah. it's not good. We, he looked talk- way better. Brandon and I talked about that when we wrapped up the Yorton. And we were like, you know, my theory was that like, Levi like poses like an old school bodybuilder or whatever, exactly. and like yeah. the old school bodybuilders didn't care what their glutes looked like or whatever, right? They just kind of let them hang there. And I think that's what he was doing, and I think he probably got. I don't think he listened to our podcast. I think he probably <laughs> yeah. uh, get feedback from the judges who were like, "Some of the way you're hitting those shots, probably man, a little strange." Mm-hmm. What's that? Probably from everyone, not just like yeah. you yeah. know the yeah. judges. They're like, "Man, you need to really improve your posing because he has <clears throat> an amazing physique. He right. has muscle maturity." You know, he's been competing. He's a veteran. He's been competing for years. Uh, he's had crazy dense muscle belly. 
oh, yeah. and his conditioning was fucking insane. He, yeah. I honestly think he was like one of the top, he was the top three most conditioned guy at world. It was Freeman, yeah. Levi, and that, that Australian guy. Those were the top yeah. three conditioned guys. Yeah. I, I wish Levi would post uh, more of like physique shots on Instagram because yeah. I see him lifting and he goes hard in the gym. I love that. But I, I, I just love to see like him do a front double bicep and like half 90 lighting. Like it, it'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. Come on. It'd be awesome. To be honest, like um, I was I was I thought he had it, too, just because Adrian had a great physique, too. Like, don't get me wrong. It was great. Um, side by side. Um, you definitely see more maturity and density from Levi. Like. That's why I thought he would edge edge him out, like more muscularity, more density, the conditioning. Um, so like, but then again, I I'm taking in factor the fact like the posing routine. Um, like they really like Adrian's posing routine. Like mm-hmm. when he did it, they were really entertained, and I'm pretty sure he got close. Yeah, he, he got close to like perfect score, and oh, and wow. I think when I heard from Shadow from um Clement, he he mentioned like they give you like I think like one to six points, so that gave him like a big boost. And oh wow, hmm. I, I maybe mean, that's why like. Like I think a lot of people were like surprised that mm. um he topped he won that class over Lee. I like, knew he was top two because I had yeah oh definitely definitely top two like between yeah. them too. But I honestly thought Levi was going to win just due to his muscle yes. you know maturity yes. and his conditioning because yeah. his legs were way way more conditioned yes. than Avidian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Avidian is a way way better poser yeah. and he's he knows how to present his physique a lot better yeah. than Levi. Mm-hmm. And right. that when he did that posing routine yeah that was money i like that yeah you know it was a cool routine he even popped out the flower he did yeah. some magic that was dope that was dope that was the crowd that's what I got the crowd out you know, yeah. so i gave that a 10 out of 10 he looked yeah. great yeah you know so, but i honestly think and i told adrian after prejudging because i was texting him i said hey man you got to get more conditioned your legs aren't popping compared to levi and he honestly thought he was going to get second place because yeah. we you know we were texting each other in spanish and, you know, he, he ended up winning, but I yeah. think it had to do with one and two things, his posing routine. And number two, that kid is a great looking kid. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't get, care. You know, bodybuilding, yes, is bodybuilding, but it has something to do. It's more like, you know, it is yeah, some, yeah. somewhat of yeah. a pageant. Right. That kid looks like a GQ model. Yep. No offense. Look, he's a good looking kid. He's probably the best looking kid out of everyone in the WMBF. He looks like Ronaldo. <laughs> I even said it to Iron Lord. That guy looks like Ronaldo's fucking twin brother. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> he is like, he, he is one aesthetic looking kid, but he's got some facial features. You know, my wife even told me, she goes, that's a good looking kid right there. You know? And I think that that had some edge, you know, on yeah. maybe some female judges. The female judges <laughs> said, God damn, this is one sexy kid. I'm going to give him the next one. You know? And that another thing, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I honestly think you know that could be for the WMBF a good you know marketing tool to put on their posters because he's a good looking kid. You he's know good. they ain't gonna put an ugly ass suit on a poster compared to a good looking kid. You know they're trying to. Yeah. I'm be honest. I, I will. I, I will say um, the things I observed with this call is number one when they announced Levi in second. Uh, there was like a gasp in the crowd. I heard. I heard it on the webcast. Like everyone, yeah. like oh, yeah. people were like, oh. You know what I mean, and you could you could tell <laughs> Levi was upset, and he oh, he, held, he, held, he, he held it together, but, but you could tell he could not wait to get off that stage and take that medal off. Mm-hmm. Like like I was oh, yeah. watching his body language, and he just wanted to get off there before it was even off. He was taking the medal off. Did right? he even oh, post wow. anything about about his win afterwards? He no, never does, man. Never does. He'll, he'll, never. he'll post a video of him of him doing like two uh, two ninety five squats for forty reps tomorrow. Like that's what he'll post. <laughs> <laughs> just... That guy's an animal, man. He's a beast in the gym. That guy's yeah. strong as fuck. Yeah, there's and, literally there's nothing. Mm-mm. And uh, I I I noticed too this a, this Adrian guy. You know, like all the things you guys said, great posing, really aesthetic body, aesthetic facial features, all that. And he does have a big Instagram following. So if they oh, do yeah. want to, like, you know, try to mark up, like, like, um, you know, hype and him up. He's a an international bit. athlete. International. That's a big thing. Huge, yeah. Huge, huge thing. I believe in and that. I noticed that they I always that. I've seen that in the WNBS. They like those international athletes. They, you know, mm-hmm. they, they travel all the way to the United States. But I've also noticed they're, you know, they're trying to market it as a world championship because it is a world championship. Right. And trying, you know, to bring in more people from different parts of, you know, the world. 
Also, I, I, I will that. say, when I was at Natural Mania, and so this is Nancy Andrews again, and she's doing the competitor meetings, they said that if it the call is close and the posing routine, like one is better than the other, like like they will go with the one with the better posing routine. Like they they are looking to score that. So if anyone's wondering about that, they do take that into consideration. So that probably was a big factor too in that in that call. Yeah, definitely. That's that's the only way I can really see it because like um as we go on later to the other classes, um I'll mention it too, but it's just but I, I honestly saw one too. Like I was just a little bit surprised because I just thought, you know, with in the past it's the density maturity you always hear like you almost got it but you just need a little bit more time a little more age under your belt but you know i mean they made the call you know that's the sport you never it's all about what the judges are looking for sometimes you know does anyone know how old uh, adrian is i think he's 28 28 you know i think uh levi is actually like about 30 as well he's yeah he's younger Oh, but, wow. really? but it's been competing longer. Damn, yeah. He looked yeah. old. He was, Sorry, Levi. Levi was winning like pro shows when he was like 21, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He competed in uh, World 20... 2013. Came second to Whitaker. 2013. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah. It was him, Whitaker, and uh, my boy Francisco Montealegre. He took third. Yeah, I remember yes. that. Yes, that's right. If anyone is curious too, if you go to Brian Whitaker's website, there's a huge wrap up on that. and. Levi was beating Brian in some of those shots in some ways because of his muscle bellies, but it's just the back of a bicep. Brian Whitaker did. But back in 2013, Levi did not bring the conditioning he brought this year. No, 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 exactly. This this was a really good (laughs) Levi this year. Yeah, this was the best Levi I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, so should we move on to middleweight? Mm Mm-hmm. So... Um, what we had expected to see too, and what I thought if we were going to do a pregame podcast is that we'd, there'd be a rematch between, uh, Greeno, uh, Mackie and, uh, Levi in the lightweight. Turns out Greeno didn't make weight for that class. They threw him in the middleweight. I think that hurt him quite a bit, um, uh, in this lineup. Cause he just did kind of look a little bit small to me in it. And, um, he, I and believe he plays. He did not bring the conditioning that he that he usually brings. He was not nearly as conditioned as he has been in previous shows. He mm-hmm. came with a bigger, fuller look, but his hamstring and his glutes were not popping. Mm-hmm. And yeah. he is very, very aesthetic. I honestly think he has some of the best. I think he has the best shape, you know, between yep. the lightweight and the middleweight right now. He's oh, so yeah. damn aesthetic. His yeah, he's pleasing to look at. Yeah, different. very pleasing to look at. From head to toe, he has yeah. everything. He just needs to come in leaner. He has not come in peeled before. I've never seen him super peeled. I've seen him, you know, he needs to drop at least five more pounds to come in completely mm-hmm. peeled. And he needs to be, he came in at 162 yep. for the cutoff weight. He needs to be 157, 156, in my opinion, to come in elite conditioning, yep. game over. He can win yeah. a world championship overall. I honestly think he can beat Kendall if he brings an alien package with, yep. with the shape he has. Yeah. Yep. So I was surprised right. to see him in the middleweight class too because of the cutoff. Because one, I guess after seeing him at the universe, I kind of, I guess I, I expect him to come in a little more peeled with more time, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, more time to kind of like make some more adjustments and push a little bit harder for the final stretch. Um, but, you know, honestly, when he stepped on, it's always hard because like when they, when you put in a class where you don't truly belong, Right, and it's it's just you get overlooked because now you look small compared to the other bigger guys that's naturally in that mm-hmm. weight class, and you know, and that's why that. That's... Oh, Shao broke up there a little bit. Um, as soon as he reconnects, we'll get back to him. But uh, Br- Brandon, you had the name of the gentleman from Taiwan who won. Uh, can you say that on the air so I don't? Yeah, uh... yeah I'll try not to butcher it. It was uh, <coughs> Chang Jun Chang. Chang Jun Chang. Uh, Chang. Yep. So I'd never seen this guy before. AKA um, Chun Li. <laughs> yo, he's the man, yo. When he, I thought yeah, he was the guy in the universe for a second, but it wasn't him. I was like, yo, was that him? He looked so much better. I, yeah. I was like, he looks so he much really tighter. He really in the last few weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, he he found the code. No, but he looked. I thought he. I mean, he had weak points, like as all bodybuilders do. Um, certain strong points and just certain weak points. Um, but he definitely stood out, like his just condition wise, you know. And when he came out to when he was posing, I was like, "Wow, okay, he's his poses are okay." Because I remember the guy at the universe, um, the 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 Korean guy, his posing. He was a big guy, but it was just he wasn't conditioned. Posing wasn't great, so 
I thought it was the same dude, and I was just like, wow, this guy fixed everything that mm-hmm. everybody was saying like he had to fix. But um, but then again, like you know, he looked really good. Um, Iron Lord, when I saw him, I didn't I didn't really because he was most of the time on side. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed it. They didn't really yeah. like call him out. So yeah, I, I noticed I'm, that too. I was little, I was kind of freaking out. I was like, what the fuck is going yeah. on? Yeah. Because he looked so good, and they had him on the outside most of the time. Yeah. And then at the very end. They put him in the inside, and I think it has a lot to do. All right, I have to say something. I did not like the head judge of the WMBF. I could not stand that guy. I'll be honest with you. I know a lot of people will say, you know, keep their, you know, tied, you know, mouth closed and whatever. But no, man, I do not like that guy. He, I competed last year at the World Championship. This guy talks shit to everyone while you're on stage. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to be more professional, especially like you're in a world championship. Don't yeah. talk shit to the competitor. Don't tell them, you know, this and this, you know. Oh, maybe, you know, you, you have a lot of nerves when you're on a world stage Oh yeah. on top of it. So if you, you may not be hearing everything. So if you turn the wrong way, don't talk shit to the guy and say, and oh, by the way, this and this. Keep you in know? mind, not everyone speaks English. Yes, yes. That was like yeah, a, we don't, a common we don't thing. Speak the Queen's English. I'm yeah. sorry. You know, we're yeah. from the United States. You know, yeah. and but just don't you can't you can't do that. And I, you yeah. know, I told a few British competitors that, and I was like, hey man, that are friends with the guy. Hopefully he hears it. You know, but I think his name's Mark Oakes. You know, he was an old competitor from like 2011 or something. He won a bat weight world championship with the WMBF. But come on, man, you have to be more professional. You can't talk shit to the competitors. You know. One of these kids might pop one day and just be like, "Hey, I'm gonna fuck you," and you know, pop him after you know after your show or something. I'll be honest, you're, <laughs> you should not do that. You're a professional. Mm. You're competing at the biggest stage in the world. You know, be as professional as possible. And then also, he was the guy that did not do call outs because during the amateur um, division, there was a different head judge, and I thought he was a lot, way way better than the pro head judge. You know, so my opinion. And yeah. then the pro head judge was the one that was the one who was making most of the calls himself, switching guys. Yep. He wasn't listening to everyone. He was like, okay, I like you. I like you. Let's move you guys together. Right. He was doing most of the calls. Mm-hmm. So I honestly think that had a huge impact on the total score because they were, he was doing, you know, everything. And then the other people had to score these two guys as one and two. Yep. Based off yep. what he thought, not what the whole panel thought. Agreed. Yeah. So and I was go oh, ahead, Brandon. Go oh, ahead. sorry. I just want to throw in, you know, the other world championship that didn't happen this past weekend was, you know, uh, the Yorton Cup, and I happened to sit second row right behind the judges. And one thing that I did like, I know the head judge Nam Lee, and he, although he's a, a really good head judge in my opinion, he looked to his left, he would look to his right, and he would say, "What do you want to see?" And I thought that was awesome because he asked all the judges what what they wanted and not what he wanted. Mm, yes, I, I think um, what well, might be a it might be a good time now to kind of segue to and some of the some of the things that we kind of agreed on as a group that we didn't really like about the worlds this year. And one of them was that they didn't do any call outs. Like yeah. they had some of these some of these classes with like 15, 20 guys on stage at once. Mm-hmm. And it just seemed to me like it was too many bodies on stage. Um, for me as a fan, I would like to see a call out of like the top five. And I'd like to, like I say, nerd out on like front of a bicep, you know, on like Greeno versus, you know, this guy from Taiwan, side chest, you know, see what's going on there. I want to see all that. I don't want to have all this other distracting stuff going on. Not that the other competitors aren't great, they just, but they just have a fair look at it too. And then, you know, if you're if you're coming in ninth, you should um, you should be a, get a good close look to someone who's coming in tenth. You know what I mean? Right. And I know the show went on forever, and they have to have a you know they have to manage their time effectively. But I feel like that could have been done better somehow, some way. And another thing that I thought too that and this could have hurt Mackie is just the lighting on stage. So mm-hmm. the lighting was super dark, and uh, like I said to you guys in our pregame, most of the lighting seems to on these t- venues seems to favor the dark, darker skinned people who show up with really dark tans. But this seemed to more favor, you know, the lighter skinned uh, tans. Like, so this, this guy from Taiwan had a pretty light tan compared to like, Garino, it, it right? seemed like he didn't even have a tan on at first. Like yeah. he, was, he was white. I, I'm darker than him than he was at the comp- competition. Was... My natural melody, you know, 
My right. natural skin color. Sean, yeah, yeah, what yeah. did you think of his tan since you were there? You know what it was? I, I felt like he was dark, but he, he didn't really... Like, you know how other people, like, they're tan, like, with the glaze, they pop mm-hmm. out? I felt like he was... Who just dry like he couldn't right. even see the definition and yeah. and I noticed that at the universe and I noticed he had that abs. In- That's oh, one no, thing that popped out. Like he had those abs. Like every time he hit like a yeah. front double, he had yeah. that crazy midsection. Right. But I'm talking about like the know, rear abs- shots. Yeah, like the glutes and the the lines Ooh, and the, and I know nice. he has these things. I know he does. So it was just like I couldn't really see them. And then and it was also hard because um there were so many people in that class. So it was because right. they they even mentioned it. They're like, don't worry. Um, if you can't open all the way, your elbows don't worry. We're not judging elbows. So like some guys couldn't even open fully. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. So it was like, you know, you know how they always say you got to fight for the spot and open, open up. So, you know, they're saying like, and that's the thing. Like they always say, don't worry, we're not looking for that. But if you're gonna be judging a red double by, if someone can't open fully, then your back is half closed. Then yeah, right, that's you know, not good. You're you're, yeah. beat, you're beating yourself. You know. You know. Yeah. Man, How did he look at the back? Because I really couldn't tell on the television. It was I tough. couldn't really tell too because so he was, he was angled so on, the, on the side where, like, he was just facing the judge. He wasn't even facing the audience because they had to. They had him like in a round, kind of like almost like a U shape kind of. So like I couldn't really see him, but he just, you know, he they didn't really move him around much. And that's the thing, and they only focused on um the Taiwan Taiwan guy, um the guy that got second or third place. So they focused them to a lot. So I, that's why I thought it was gonna be one and two, originally. Like, I, I don't like, even oh. I don't even recall who the second place finisher was, or if it wasn't Mackie, if it was um. No, the third place the, finisher. You mean? The, he was a guy the, from uh, the UK. UK, okay, right on. Yeah. So like he looked, I thought that he was gonna be like one or two. That oh, was, that was the guy who was holding those weird classic physiques, the the classic posing all. Yeah, that he like turned stuff. to the side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, okay, I know what you're talking about now. So I was thinking about. Yeah, that. he looked all right. He looked okay. Yeah. I but didn't then have again, you know, I know after with the routines, you know, and, and I saw this with Iron Lord. He was hardening up later on as posing went on for the universe. So why don't why don't they have like guys who know the sport like us judge <laughs> compared <laughs> to a bunch of old ass people that don't know what the fuck they're doing? Sometimes I'm like, you know, they have to go to all these classes and learn this and this. And yeah. honestly, I'm like, they don't know a damn thing about bodybuilding. You but, know, it's like there was like a good lineup of pro bodybuilders that aren't competing that yeah. and at least retired guys that know their shit. I think there would be a lot different, you know, there, yeah. the turnout would be way different than it was this past year. <laughs> but the sport's but Jose, always you know, changing too. We're, so. uh, yeah. we're just a bunch of keyboard warriors, right? You know? <laughs> oh, pretty yeah, much. I know I'm sure that's what they yeah, think. We, that's you know, for sure. We compete, yeah. we bust our asses, but we know, yeah. you know, we know the sport more than anyone else because we right. actually do it. But that's what they always to, say. Know, it depends on what the judges really want, and you know, you know, there there are some calls that the the fans didn't agree on, and you know, this isn't the first bodybuilding show, first championships oh, when it felt right. like that, and it really always comes down to, you know, I would say the judging panel, but the head yeah, judge kind of yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that head judge. I don't like that guy as a head judge. And if that WMBF is listening, you know, I think you guys need to, you know, fire his ass and get someone else because I don't think he is a good head judge. You know, number one, he's not professional. He shouldn't be talking shit to the athletes. And on top of it, he's making most of the calls himself as a head judge, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's my opinion. I have a lot of people that saw it and agree with me. So. But that so was definitely I, a stack class, the just, middleweight class. When they came out, we're like, holy crap. Like we thought, like lightweight was stacked, and then here comes the middle. Every that. class is stacked. I, yeah. I give it up. Three athletes yeah. busted their ass. Well, then that, everyone well, that beef, great. Everything like, looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't we move on to the heavyweight class now? Uh, we'll probably just talk about one and two. We had uh, Kendall, the overall winner, and Sam Mokinola, and you know they kind of hyped that up a little bit, which was good. I I hope they do more of that. There in the were future. a lot of monsters at that in that heavyweight class, and I think if they're <laughs> There was that one guy. He was at the red trunks. He was like seven yeah. feet tall. Yeah. The, the, yeah. I, I don't know if he was African American or he's somewhere from Africa or something. But that he was huge. Yes. If that came, if that guy came in peeled, game over. He'd win. Mm-hmm. Honestly, he was huge. But uh, yeah, the heavyweight, it, the the top two guys that stood out were Sam and uh, and Kendall. Those were the right. top guys. So, Shao, how did you see the comparisons? I certainly have a few thoughts on it, but you were there in the flesh. You saw it all go down. How did you see it? Um, 
I, you know, Kendo definitely has more size than Sam overall. Um, Kendo with some poses, he didn't, especially with the rear, the rear lat spread, there was a few times he didn't, like, open up. But then again, like, it can, it's too many big guys on stage, and they don't, they don't have that space. And mm-hmm. all, all the classes, time. all the classes, they, like, the guys just kept moving off the line. So they spent a lot of time just pushing Getting them back mad. on the line. Right. And so, like, everybody was basically fighting. They didn't want to be out angled. So everybody was trying, like, you know, and sometimes when you see a guy next to you move up, so you kind of move up a little bit after each quarter turn. So, mm-hmm. you know, they kept shifting them back. But I thought Sam, honestly, like, Sam, I'm a, like, I just love how he's always so, like, to me, he's very, he's very balanced. Like, I always feel like conditioning-wise, like, you know, he's huge, but I always know, like, especially in that weight class, there's always going to be guys coming in way bigger. Right. You know, but he he comes in conditioned and balanced. And I think, you know, um, that's that's why a lot of the time when he, he, he wins his shows, he comes in with that balanced overall package. Mm-hmm. But Kendo just has a lot of muscle, man. Like, right. Dude, you know, like I felt like he could have gotten leaner, but then again, like, yeah, any bodybuilder that's like a critique. Anyone could get leaner, right? Anyone could add. Now, what, from what I heard, Kendall does like a weird water cut. Yeah, he doesn't really do a like what we do. We get peeled out of our minds, you know, and then pull back up. Yeah, like I on I heard from a few people. I'm not sure 100, percent but I heard he like he does some old school type, you know, you know, pulls the water. Yeah, he yeah. was talking about it on the social media a few days before. He's like, I'm on, I'm, I still haven't cut my water yet kind of type post. You know, like, this isn't my final form type type post. Yeah. And so that stood out to me. Um, I will say when I when I saw Sam, I mean, uh, I don't want to be hard on Sam because Sam is a, is a great bodybuilder, you know, for sure. And I love following his season and great guy. And, you know, he looked great at the show. But something about his physique in this last bit of the prep, I feel like, Maybe he's just been on prep for too long, but it's too just long. like he, exactly. he, did, he wasn't. He's just not popping like I've seen him pop before. And I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be, you know, like seem like I'm not a fan of him because I am. And I, I thought, you know, he looked great, and he's always going to be up there, you know, in these in these top pro shows. But you know, just he just looked a little like kind of like flat and just kind of like not. And I know we we said it, you I, can over diet. There, there, it, you can actually over diet. I've seen so oh, many yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah. Your body Especially can you doing shows so since much. like the summer, right? So yeah. you can do so much to your body. Like your body can only take so much. Right. I've over dieted in the past. All your of body us. The yeah, same. Yeah. All of it us. It doesn't pop. You know yeah. who, who, in my opinion, over dieted and didn't look good is like he had earlier in the year was Jeff Albers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just did not pop. He did not look good. He had been dieting for God knows how long. Like 62. 62 weeks. weeks. Right. Mm-hmm. I forgot I, I was going to mention that. I thought the same thing. He just looked kind of yeah. like uh, he just didn't quite have that pop going when, when he got out there. I, I kind of like, forgot he was on. Honestly, like, yeah. I didn't even, like, I was browsing. I'm like, oh, pop, like, I forgot five. he was he was in that class. Like, right. I didn't even I, see him. I didn't even notice him. Like, I don't know if you guys saw today either. Um, Actually, one of my guys told me he's already committed to 2021 doing doing a prep again in 2021, he said. And I was just like, no, are you serious? Like, you literally just stopped. And I guess he wants to come back because he's going to be 50 in 2021. I'm like, dude, like, that's so <laughs> soon. If you're going to diet for a year, you know, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It takes yeah. a long time for your body just to come back. I dieted yeah. two years back to back, 2017 and 18. Mm-hmm. I did not feel normal for like six months. Yeah. Like, I started soon. feeling finally better. Like, I would say like the end of this summer, like normal again. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you're down to such low body fat for such a long period of time, it fucks with your hormones. It fucks with everything. You're not going right. to feel the same. No way. And then guys who just keep competing back to back to back years, man, you're you're screwing up your body. I'll right. be honest with you. I did want to make one last comment um, on Sam and Kendall, though. I will say that I really did think that Sam looked better than he did at the Yorton. I think yeah. he, yeah. I don't know if he dropped yeah. a little bit of weight or what he did. Or... There was more separation, 100%. Okay. Yeah, he got leaner. He, he he usually is like around like 201, 202 on stage. And I think he got sub 200 yeah. for, um, <laughs> for this competition. So I, so I will yeah, say that did. I think he did improve since the Yorton. So that was, that was good to see. And like Connor was saying, you know, we don't want to take anything away from Sam. And I honestly, I have nothing nothing negative to say about it. I thought he looked really good. I think what it was though, in my opinion, was just Kendall's dominance. 
And yeah. I think with and we all were all when we were all kind of saying it in the in the group message that we were going back and forth. And we were just saying he has a stupid amount of muscle. Like he's just so big. Like his his hamstrings are ridiculous. And for and you never ever see that on a kid that age. Because for those of you guys who don't know, 23. he's like 23, 24. And for him to have that amount of muscle and to have that amount of like muscle in your hamstrings at that age is just damn near unheard of. And we talked about it. You know, we talked about the top tier genetics and. And that kind of stuff. And we're not taking anything away from him because I'm sure he works extremely hard. Yeah. But, man, just like a stupid amount of muscle. And even Sam said, and I watched, I didn't watch all the video that Sam put out today. I just kind of scrolled through it. But he even said, like, for Sam to win, for him to win, he needs to come in 100% and he needs Kendall to come in off. And that's yeah. really what it takes. It's because he's just, Kendall's just so dominant. He's so big. And, yeah, he wasn't conditioned. Uh, to the point where maybe all of us would have liked to see him, but he's just so big and so dense and poses fairly well. Uh, yep. You know, he, he definitely yeah. struggles with some shots, but like his side chest or his yeah. just standing front and back relax are just stupid. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. just really hard. It's really hard to overcome that, you know, when he's just so large. And, and unfortunately, like Sam said, there's really just nothing he can do. It's just waiting for him, waiting for Kendall to mess up. Mm -hmm. I right. think Sam, Sam has an amazing physique. I'm a great friend of his, and I've known him for a long time. We've even competed on stage together. Uh, but I think Sam, compared to Kendall, honestly, Kendall has a better physique in aspect of just his, his size ratio. So mm -hmm. Kendall's a lot shorter than Sam. Sam is yep. very tall. tall. He's very, very tall. Sam has a huge upper body, yeah. but I honestly think his lower body needs to come up to match his upper body to him to have a full complete physique because yeah. when i can when, when i have stage shots with sam and my legs and i'm short i'm like five six and a half okay. or you know my legs are almost the same size as sam's legs yeah it's tall so he needs to bring up his legs for how big mm -hmm. he is right you know? right for his shape his frame right. and i've you know i've told him that and i've told other people that for him to be like that, for a heavyweight bodybuilder, mm -hmm. he needs to bring up the legs to compete mm -hmm. with a Ken, with a guy like the Kendall Richmond. Right, right. You know, I, I was gonna say, why don't we go ahead and get into the overall? And so the way <laughs> the way I saw the overall, um, pretty much like it was as simple as quarter turn to the right, and I thought Kendall had it. Like I, I know, I know that that I don't mean to diminish the other competitors too, but he just oh, yeah. how much size on that guy's chest and on the side yeah. and side relaxed. It That's was like just, last year with Babacar. Yeah, yeah. your your eyes immediately went to him, yeah. and then they had they had the other two winners, the middleweight and the light and the lightweight guy, and their condition wasn't amazing. You know, Brett's right. condition was amazing. Yeah. You know, but um, the middle and lightweight were not amazing. And like we said, Kendall's, we could have seen him probably tighter, you know, the way he is. But compared to that lineup, it was just such a, I thought, a breeze for him to walk through. Like, like I said, it was simple as quarter turn to the right. Yeah. And, and, and he had it. And it what I love, over. Yeah. yeah, I love too the way uh, he kind of hits his front double. He's got like two variations where he's got like one where he's hitting his abs and one where he kind of looks like an old school bodybuilder. He's hitting a vacuum and his legs are kind of a little bit more straight up and down. Yeah. But they just, the way he hits it, your eyes just kind of go to it. And I, I think, you know, I, I'll give him some props for that. And you know, that, that was it, man. And this was, it's, you know, it's such an interesting time in natural bodybuilding, you know, when there's a world championships, <laughs> you don't even know who's going to show up and who's not. Yes. So had this Babacar guy showed up, who mm -hmm. knows what would have happened? You know, I yeah. think that would have been really would, fun to see. He would have won again. Probably. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. With I saw condition. them both last year. I saw them compete last year or yeah, it was 2018. Kendall and Babacar because they're in the same weight class. And mm -hmm. Babacar, man, he's on a different level. Like yeah. that guy is fucking nutty. I saw him backstage. I was talking to him. that guy is he's scary. He's one of those guys you just look at and you're like, what in the fuck? This guy is on a different level, completely mm -hmm. different level. And he just he easily wins. He has everything Density, and crazy, his conditioning yeah. is insane yeah and crazy. he's short he's like five seven is he really he's, wow he's five seven weighs 180 pounds and he's peeled oh. and just he's a monster yeah. so you look at this guy and you're like nah man no one no one's gonna touch this guy right and honestly that, i think that's the reason he said he doesn't have any competition in WMBF, and he doesn't yeah. so he's gonna go compete with the half natty guys in the muscle mania now Mania, yeah yeah <laughs> 
Shao, did you have any comments on the overall? I mean, you were there, you would have saw it in the no, flash. No, I mean, honestly, like, like when I saw when you see them, like, like you mentioned, like Kendo, um, I thought the Asian guy hit um a few good shots. Like he, like the crab most muscular, mm. like he was he like full, yeah. he was like full. Mm-hmm. But then again, like yeah. when it went to the rear, like Kendall's size, legs, his back, the muscle belly, you just saw like the yeah. size difference, and you were just like, okay. Like, you know, the guys are good. They're good. Everyone else is good up there. You know, they fought. They earned their way up there. But it's yep. just, like what we all said, like, he just has too much muscle and density. And it just pops. It, like, it literally pop. You know. Right on, right on. So, um, that's pretty much the wrap-ups of the championships there. Um, so, one kind of interesting side thing that happened um, was there was an uh, uh, amateur from Australia who showed up. Uh, Brandon Kepner, I think his name is. And he showed up with Dream Tan. And now a lot of these promoters have... <laughs> he looked have, the best. He looked the best. Have, have come he down. The best. <laughs> a lot of these promoters have come down on Dream Tan. I know it's an issue with it mucking up venues. and uh, But it, if you watch that, if you look at the pictures, this guy's color was amazing. His condition was amazing. Like, it we're frustrates... competing at high schools. We're not competing like at the Louvre or some like amazing place. Come yeah. on now. This is ridiculous. <laughs> you know? But, but for me put as a fan of paper and, let us put you know, put up some paper around the place and let us compete in uh yeah. dream you know, dream tan. It makes your physique look that much better because number one, you're not spending an extra hundred and twenty five dollars on a tan. Yeah, you're spending thirty bucks on two tubs. I know. Yeah. And and exactly. for me as a fan, I wanna see that crazy density and muscularity that Dream Tan brings out. I wanna see people look like that and I wanna see Images and natural body, but just blowing people's minds because they have that crazy color density, yeah. just shine like muscular, just popping out. That's what's cool about natural bodybuilding is like the conditioning and like how much muscle separation that Dream Tan can bring out. And so this kid looked amazing, you know, better than the whole the whole field, and they they put him in second place, <laughs> likely because of the Dream Tan rule, which is frustrating to see, is you know, for us athletes for sure. I think they should have disqualified him from the get-go if he was wearing dream tan. Yeah. You know, it, it, just don't screw the guy and say, hey, because you're wearing dream tan, that doesn't mean the physique is better than this guy, and we're going to, you know, give you a second place. Because the guy busted his ass off. We obviously saw the physique that he brought. Everyone was jaw-dropped and said, wow, this guy's going to win the overall and be a new, you know, WMBF pro. And this guy, as the way he could have looked, he could have done damage with the pros pros yeah absolutely it's the way he looked you know this guy is a pro in other organizations as well and he's a world champion in another organization oh wow. he could have easily you know taken a top three yeah. battling you know the, these guys mm-hmm. but they they literally fucked the guy and said no nah, we're going to give you second place because you're wearing dream tan mm-hmm. come on now that's just, that's that's wrong yep. they um when i did natural mania and so this is this like i said the same promoters they made you sign a waiver to say that you would not bring Dream Tan in the venue and wow. to know that you were disqualified if you brought Dream Tan in. So wow. I'm thinking the logistics of this is that there's stringer people backstage. One guy has Dream Tan on. Someone who is responsible for keeping track of this didn't notice or yeah. Nancy didn't notice, you know, because there's so much stuff going on. Right. And obviously, they're probably bogged down with a ton of things. So it went unnoticed, you know, when he got up there with it. Mm-hmm. And m- maybe he knew about the rule. You know, I'm assuming he probably did. He was just like, fuck it, let's just see what happens. And Or maybe he somehow missed it. And for these uh, people going overseas, they didn't get the waiver or they didn't get the memo that Dream Tan was banned. But I really feel bad for the kid to bring that level of conditioning, muscularity, be at that ahead of the pack and to even look amazing with the Dream Tan and then get uh, get kind of screwed for it. So um that's yeah that's that's too bad um anyways we will wrap this thing up shortly does any does anyone want to try and summarize you know if we were to put all these you know so let's say the top three or, or like whoever stood out to you guys on stage like if we took carl sievert versus uh kendall versus ricardo you know like what would happen or you know like who do you guys think would have turned out to be the best natural bodybuilder you know on the weekend well, one day I would like to see all the organizations come together so that we could actually have one real world championship, but that's never going to happen. Uh, but honestly, I thought that Kendall would win. Eh, yeah, I think Kendall would have. Actually, if Siobhan, Siobhan and Kendall would have been a good competition right there, that would have been, been, been a really good battle. Yeah. yeah, those would have yeah. been the top two, in my opinion. Siobhan and Kendall. <laughs> if we had to take everyone who won, 
I would say uh, definitely Kendall as well. Yeah. Um, I, I do like where Jose is going, though, uh, just to see Siobhan versus him. Uh, that would have been cool. But, uh, yeah, I think Kendall for sure. Cool. Shawn, any, uh, any, any, any yeah, thoughts on that one? I was going to say the same. I would, I would love to see Siobhan and just because they're, like, they're both beasts. And I would love to see, yeah. you know, the top guys, like, go at it. Like, you know, someone that's been doing it for a long time. And someone that's going to be up and coming be one of the greats, right. like you know. Right. I, nice. I wanted to say too, and we kind of already hinted this. The scary thing about Kendall is he's so young; he could still probably grow some muscle. You know, he can probably improve his methods of peaking in terms mm-hmm. of just getting to that lean conditioning and then not dropping water. Right. Showing up on stage even fuller with even more detail. Like it's scary what this kid can do. I just hope that he stays with natural bodybuilding and doesn't go the NBC route because I'm sure yeah. there'll be a lot of voices in his ear now. Man, like if you did this natural, you know, what do you where do you think you're gonna go if you go NBC? Right. You know, and it's probably true. He's probably he probably could be like another Sean Roden. You know, if yeah, you want to speak. Yeah, he's well, this guy has the genetics, you know, to do yeah. that. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what this guy does in the future. Uh, I'll certainly be keeping my eyes peeled for. You know what he decides if he was going to be multiple WMF world champion, or if he's going to go NPC and go that route, or maybe he'll go to a different natural federation too, like like Babakar, You know, to try and win more right. money. Right. Who knows? I mean, he's he's the pro; he can make his professional choice. Sure. But uh, yeah, I hope he sticks. Go ahead. I did want to say uh, just <clears throat> one more kind of a, a side note for next year, uh, just because of all this that happened this past weekend, you know, with all the world championships being on the same day. Um, I've made some some comments uh, towards the IPE, and actually I've made some some positive change, believe it or not. Um, I got a show moved that was going to be on the same day as the Yorton Cup. Uh, so I'm trying to split, although there's different organizations, you know, we're trying to move the shows off of the same day. So yeah. the Yorton is actually moved uh, next August. year. It's going to be at the end of August. Yeah. And then I got word that IPE Worlds is not going to be on the same weekend that it was this past year. So it's going to free up a little bit of space. You know, uh, I'm trying to play that kind of like behind the scene card where I, I kind of talk to the presidents or people that are involved. So at least they're not going to be four on the same day. You know, there still might be two um, if, you know, the NGA is going to be on the same day as WNBF. But if anyone saw the NGA Worlds, it was nothing special. Um, so hopefully, hopefully uh, everyone kind of gets their their act together and doesn't put it all on the same weekend. From the looks of it, it's not. And from the looks of it, you know, they're starting to become more cognizant of each other, which is which is a step in the right direction. You know, are we going to have one big, awesome world bodybuilding competition? I would say probably no, um, but it would be awesome to see. Uh, but th- with that being said, you know, at least the least we can do is not have the shows all on the same day. And I give I give props to the OCB. I give props to the I- IPE for at least moving their shows so it can give natural bodybuilding the great classes that we all personally want to see. So next year should be better. I just hope, uh, you know, that there's guys that are going to compete again next year, you know, to, you know, fill these classes up just because, you know, the shows aren't going to all be on the same day now. Mm-hmm. Hey, we forgot to talk about the Yorton Cup. Oh. that new guy who just won. We, 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 we did, we did a wrap cool. up of the Yorton uh, with... Uh... Oh, never mind. With Brandon man. a few weeks ago. Check oh, it out, man. So you didn't listen to that? <laughs> it, it, it got yeah, controversial. It, it got... At least go read the comments uh, on the Instagram post. Sorry, it's, and Siobhan was, was not happy with our assessment. But anyways, uh, that's that's um, neither here or there for this show, I guess. <laughs> go, go check it out, Jose. Though it, it, it got a lot of views and it got some controversy over it. So That's where the slogan Keyboard Warrior came from. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know what? Anyone on this on this podcast, if you're a pro and we talked about you and we we didn't give you the biggest shot interview, look, man, you're one of the best natural bodybuilders in the world. Um, at some point, you're going to come under some critique, and you know, all of us That's would probably love to. That's part of the sport, man. So many people say, "Hey, Jose, you have great legs and your upper body shit," and I know that. Yeah. So that's what you're working on. And I tell other people, "Hey, you have yeah. flaws, and that's the sport. Everyone has a flaw, and yep. we need to yeah. work on it. So that's the sport." So if you can't take the, you know, if you can't take it, then shit, you, you're in the wrong sport. Yeah, oh yeah. Honestly. Yeah. But that's the so, sport, you know? 
that's it, man. So we're going to wrap things up for now. That was Natty Muscle Radio. That was the big world championship, you know, wrap up episode. If you're a natural bodybuilding nerd, you probably liked it. If you don't care about natural bodybuilding, you probably didn't make it five seconds this episode. So <laughs> that's, that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Signing off. Natty Muscle Radio. We are out. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.